fifth Sunday of Easter, approaching as Ascension and Pentecost. So the community and the readings will be helping us to strengthen up our hearts and our Christian process. Let us be open to hear God's voice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. To prepare for the sacred mysteries, let us reflect how this week has been, how our Easter season has been, what we pretended, what we aimed for during Lent. Is it lasting? Has it stopped? How is your joy, your, your sadness, maybe rage or violence, regret? Are some things back into the heart? Today on this fifth Sunday of Easter, we want to tell the Lord to breathe His Spirit on us so that all those little things that are starting to accumulate, they may just get out. We need the space for Christ. So let us sing to Him to have mercy on us. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new 
in holy baptism, may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he was a disciple. Then Barnabas took charge of him and brought him to the apostles. And he reported to them how he had seen the Lord and that he had spoken to him and how in Damascus he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. He moved about freely with them in Jerusalem and spoke out boldly in the name of the Lord. He also spoke and debated with the Hellenists, but they tried to kill him. And when the brothers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him on his way to Tarsus. The church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace. It was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord. And with the consolation of the Holy Spirit, it grew in numbers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Pray. 
the coming generation be told of the Lord that they may proclaim to a people yet to be born the justice he has shown. I will reading from the first letter of St. John. Children, let us love not in word or speech, but in deed and truth. Now this is how we shall know that we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts before him in whatever our hearts condemn. For God is greater than our hearts and knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence in God and receive from him whatever we ask because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And his commandment is this, we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Those who keep his commandments remain in him and he in them. And the way we know that he remains in us is from the spirit he gave us. Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit. And everyone that does, does he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire, and they will be burned. 
If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Through the Gospel of John, we have heard many times, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, I am the good shepherd, I am the bread that came down from heaven, I am the living bread, and it is the one, the I am, that can give the living waters. Today, he refers to a different type of example. Some people say this is a parable. Normally, parables have a beginning, a development with characters and a conclusion, and you learn something at the end. Everything is a learning process here. So he's using just a figure, a figure that will be clear for them, because fig trees and vines and olive trees are everywhere in Israel. Just one clarification. That's why I was starting with the I am the bread of life, I am the good shepherd, I am the vine. And it is the I am. Just like Moses when he asked God, who are you? Who should I say sent me to Pharaoh? And God said, I am who I am. And that's a verb to be in Hebrew, but means the active being, meaning yesterday I am, I am today, and I am in the future. So it's a complete, continuous verb. And it's saying the three, like we have Father, Son, and Spirit, is the continual actions of God on his people, on creation. So Jesus is identifying himself. I'm part of that. And you know it already. But this is not about somebody that showed up to, to give you good stories, good parables. I'm here to give life. And I'm here taking it seriously to show the face of the Father. Second, the example of the vine. That you say, well, from the vine, the center of the tree, everything will grow. And Jesus will say, yes. Remember Isaiah chapter 5. There was another vine in the Old Testament. And Isaiah says that God planted that very vine, the vineyard, completely. And he set up ramparts. And he set up the walls. And he set up the wine press. And he put a tower to protect it. And he himself planted every vine so that it would be of highest quality. And then he, he would say later, the vine was the people, referred to the people of Judah. But the vine did not give any fruit. And the sweetness was not sweet at all. It was sour. And the goodness expected of them was only violence. And so God will say in, in Isaiah chapter, chapter 5 verse 7, what else could have I done the answer for anyone reading the book is nothing, Lord. You did it all. But now that vine that was a group of people that could not read the signs of the time to be able to, to say to God, we need you, now in the New Testament is Jesus. And Jesus is completely united to the Father. And they are of one thought, one mission, and that's why now it's not the same vine of the Old Testament. This is a good vine. So, I am the true vine. Of course, everyone who begins to read this, is there a fake one? No, it's not that there's fake, but there's one that pretended to do a good job. Who has tried to be a good father and sometimes makes, makes a mistake? And sometimes speaks a bit harsh and then said, oh, God, I did it again. What mother then feels that a punishment was too much? What person in the world trying to do good sometimes messes it up? And then we look back and we say, how did I do that? I, I, I had good intentions. 
Well, that's kind of like the first vine. Good, good intentions, good provider, but sometimes the delivery was not great. And Jesus is different. Jesus has love everlasting. Remember again what we lived in Holy Week. Jesus knowing who hated him so much to send him to death. But not only to any death, they needed to deride him. They needed to humiliate him the most they could. And still Jesus did not say anything, took it all, took it all to take the sins and break the cycle of violence and crucified it in the cross. And so that's kind of a different vine. That's a, a, one that we need some nourishment from. That's the source you and me need a little bit to get real life. And that's why I am the vine and true vine. And my father is the grower. So Jesus is already giving grace, giving life to every branch, you and me. And the father is the one that grows it. And the father is the one that prunes it, says the reading. And that's important because the father has that beautiful job that identify in our lives those things that are not producing any fruit, but are taking a lot of energy. Those things that make us angry, violent, sad, anxious, and they are not giving anything in return. And God will prune you. And God will try to kind of heal you in that part so that everything, all the nourishment, will go to what matters and that you may flourish and have life and life to the full. Have you ever remember a time in your life when you thought, wow, I feel like God is really pruning me everywhere and I feel humbled, but what I feel that I had to stop, I have to restart, I have to reboot myself because I was not, not, not doing the right thing? Well, those pruning times are precious because the love of God is upon you. He loves you and he wants to so that you flourish the end of the reading. My Father is glorified that you, when you bear fruit. And that's what God wants. He doesn't want anything from you. He doesn't want your money, I say. He doesn't want sacrifices from you. He doesn't want anything, a leg or an arm. He wants to give himself to you so that whatever you're going to live in eternal life, you start here that your life becomes so strong here that you are living already eternity within you, that there's nothing that can break you down because you know in whom you have placed your trust. And so it's the Father that will be fixing with that pruning. One advice, sometimes we take on on pruning ourselves, bad idea. We don't know which areas and how to treat that pruning. The Lord has the grace to allow us to strengthen ourselves. You cannot prune more people around you. And sometimes that becomes violence. And that cannot happen. We can cause great damage trying to fix a person, trying to fix myself. Come to God. Come to Jesus. Come to the vine. Without the grace, it's, import, it's impossible. You will not have strength for the journey. We need to be nourished by the vine so that we, every day we will know, I am in the right way. I am guided by the good shepherd. I am being fed by the good bread, the living bread. And that's where, what Jesus and this reading is trying to guide us to. The reading says, to the disciples, you are already pruned. You're not perfect, but you're pruned. You know the areas. And why are you pruned? Because of the word that I spoke to you, Jesus says. The word of God has that ability. And that's where the, disi the disciple has the need to remain with the word of God. That will be the lighthouse for us. How to know what God wants? Get to the Word of God. Don't read it as a book. It's great if you want to do that once, twice, and you see the differences. 
but choose readings that you can meditate, that you can grow within it and get some strength for the journey again. That's the nourishment with the grace of Jesus that will just begin to make sense in our lives. And we will know that that word is like a lamp onto our feet. And then it says, just as a branch that doesn't bear fruit and has been pruned, that will go to the trash. So don't worry. Whatever is bad will not come back to haunt you. Sometimes we revive all things. But God is saying, you might be able to say no more. No more. I'm advancing in this path of joy, in this path of grace. Is it perfect? Ask Jesus. It never was easy. But it was great because he had that security, that peace joined to the Father. The reading tells us that Jesus recommends to the disciples. He's recommending, remain in me. And that's important. Remember on one part, in the Gospel of John, there is no agony of Jesus at the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus doesn't go in the Gospel of John, fourth gospel, written by year 100. He doesn't use that place. But Jesus is doing something similar to the Garden of Gethsemane. In Gethsemane, Jesus said in the other gospels, Mark, Matthew, and Luke, Lord, take this chalice away from me, but not my will, yours. And here Jesus is offering himself, I am the vine. It's not like he's being forced. He's saying, Lord, your will. I can be the vine. I can be the living bread. I can be the good shepherd. So I'm here to do your will. And then in the same idea as the Garden of Gethsemane in the other Gospels, he'll ask the disciples in the three other Gospels, remain here and pray. And pray so that you may not fall into temptation. Three times they fell asleep. And Jesus here is asking, remain, remain in me. And that's the cue of it. And again, that's a beautiful invitation of Jesus. And he's telling us, what I want of you is not to cause trouble to you or your families, but instead to grant more life and grant life to the fullness what is the biggest danger? Our conscience, our heart. Sometimes our conscience comes and tells us, you're not worthy. You will not be able to finish it. You go so far and remember you always fall. Second reading today. If your heart accuses you, if your conscience, in other translations, if your conscience accuses you, remember, Jesus is bigger than your conscience. Jesus is bigger than your heart. So you say, yes, heart, I hear you. But the one who called me is greater. That's why the big supper, the big banquet, is this is my body, this is my blood, and please do this in memory of me. But Jesus is saying almost in memory of me is on your behalf, for your well-being, for your future. And for us today is remain in me and I will remain in you. Let us rise. And I ask you, do you believe in the Father, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. And do you believe in Jesus Christ, who died, who rose up, and who ascended into heaven? I do. I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son and is one with the Father and the Son? I, I do. Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church? I do. I do. Do you believe in baptism? in the forgiveness of sins and life eternal? I do. I do. Well, this is our faith, and this is the faith of the church, and we are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen.
And now we present our prayers into the hands of the Lord. That the baptized may be faithful witnesses to the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, we pray. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the church leaders may hold fast to the word and trust it to them, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That all who seek faith may discover the God in search of them, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the world may behold God's great works of peace, justice, and unity, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the sick may experience God at work within them, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the dead may rejoice among apostles from every age, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For your special intentions, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father of mercy, receive the intentions we, we have spoken out loud and those that remain in our hearts and only you know. We present all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I am the vine and you the branches. Remain in me as I remain in you. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for, for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up, them to, the up Lord. to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right and just. just. It is truly right and just our duty and salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. And so, overcome with paschal joy, we sing together the unending hymn of your glory when we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us 
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. And have mercy on us all, we pray, so that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, Saint John, Eudes, Saint Patrick, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And following the divine command of our brother Jesus Christ, together we dare to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, power and, and the glory, glory are, are yours, yours now, now and forever. And forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the
hears. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, not worthy that you should that enter, you should enter my under my roof, but only, only say, say the word, and my soul, soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you by faith as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Cross.